We filmed heart-rendering scenes of a pilot whale nursing a, a dead calf, which we suspect was contaminated by it through toxic shock. When you go to an area that you know no human has ever seen before and all of a sudden you come across a plastic bottle or a sheet of plastic or a plastic bag. We also um, came across albatross that regurgitate plastic to their young. In some of the most remote parts of the ocean where samples are being taken, even in the deep seabed, we're finding particles of broken down plastic. We barely did a dive without seeing plastic somewhere in the ocean. Uh, there clearly are changes happening. We know that plastic production in the last 20 years has gone through the roof. Um, I think half of all the plastics on Earth have been made since the original Blue Planet series. And a lot of it finds its way into the ocean. We tell an extremely emotive story of um, a pilot whale mother that, that we think may have contaminated uh, um, her newborn calf with toxins. In the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth, I was desperate to use sound recordings. I knew a scientist that was going out there to put a hydrophone. So that's nearly 11 kilometers deep. He was placing a hydrophone at the bottom of the sea and his recordings were just picking up shipping traffic. We didn't really understand, A, how much sound we're putting into the ocean through our shipping traffic, through our exploration and drilling for oil. So many things we do have an impact creating sound in the ocean. What we didn't know is that even tiny reef fish, like the clownfish, are utterly dependent on sound at very critical stages in their lives. Reef fish, like clownfish, rely on sound communication. They need to hear the sound of predators. And just an um, innocuous boat passing overhead is enough to, to drown out those important sounds. There are things we can all do at a local level, at a government level, to give the oceans a chance of recovery. One important thing is to create marine protected areas. In Norway, it used to be home to one of the grossest herring fisheries uh, of all. It then collapsed through, through over-exploitation, but today it's bounced back through careful management so there's enough food for uh, not just us, but, but the local uh, wealth of killer whales. The, the wildlife just bounces back. If you give the seas just half a chance, then the nature will start to respond and recover. If you keep certain areas off limits, particularly where marine life is known to breed, nursery grounds for instance, like mangroves, or like uh, um, important breeding grounds for whale sharks in the Galapagos Islands, if you can protect those, then even if there are casualties beyond, at least the species stands a chance at the breeding level. And we've seen it in Monterey Bay, we've seen it in Cabo Pulmo, Mexico, um, where places are protected and where the wildlife's given a chance, they just come bouncing back. Although it's out of sight, out of mind to a lot of us, it still occupies 70% of our planet and defines our well-being.